What if I told you that tiny four-pound predators could be the solution to one of Florida's biggest ecological disasters? Picture thousands of mongooses working as a team, hunting giant serpents that are devastating the Everglades. Sounds like science fiction? Maybe it's not as impossible as you think. Today we're exploring one of the boldest ideas ever considered to control. Florida's python invasion, and you won't believe the incredible details we uncovered. Florida has become a true ecological battleground. Over 500 invasive species call this state home, transforming entire landscapes and devastating native wildlife. But among all these invaders, there's one that stands out for its destructive power, the Burmese python. These scaly giants are no joke. We're talking about snakes that can easily exceed 16 feet in length and weigh over. 110 pounds, some become true monsters reaching 154 pounds. To give you an idea of the scale of this problem, since the 2000s, these pythons have eliminated over 90% of some small and medium-sized mammal species in the Everglades. Raccoons, opossums, rabbits, even young alligators, all became meals for these relentless predators. And the worst part? They breed like rabbits. A single female can lay up to 100 eggs per year. With numbers like these, it's no wonder there are estimates of thousands upon thousands of Burmese pythons loose in Florida's wilderness. Traditional control methods simply aren't cutting it. Professional hunters, traps, even hunting competitions. Nothing seems to slow down this invasion. That's when some researchers started thinking outside the box. And that's where our small but mighty hero comes in, the mongoose. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay up to date with the most incredible stories from the animal kingdom, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps us keep bringing these videos to you. Now back to mongooses. These small predators are way more impressive than they appear. There are over 20 known species spread across the world varying dramatically in size, from the smallest at just 9.5 inches and 11 ounces, to the largest reaching 23 inches and 11 pounds. Wait a minute, 11 pounds against 110 pounds? That means even the largest mongooses can be 10 times lighter than big pythons. How the hell could this possibly work? The answer lies in the extraordinary abilities of these little warriors. Mongooses are snake-killing machines. Literally. They possess supernatural agility that allows them to dodge the fastest strikes, lightning-fast reflexes, and natural resistance to venom that makes them practically immune to the world's most lethal serpents. We're talking about animals that face African cobras, deadly vipers, and other snakes that would kill any other predator in seconds. Their thick fur and tough skin work like natural armor, while their combat tactics, wearing down the snake with fast, unpredictable movements, is simply genius. But here comes the big question. Pythons aren't common venomous snakes. They're constrictors, assassins that kill by crushing and suffocating their prey with absurd force. And unlike a cobra that needs to inject venom, a python can simply swallow a mongoose whole. Records of confrontations between mongooses and pythons are rare and, when they happen, usually involve smaller pythons being preyed upon. The big ones? Well, they're avoided even by the bravest mongooses. And it makes sense. A four-pound animal facing a 66-88 or 110-pound opponent alone is practically suicide. But, what if it wasn't just one mongoose? What if it was an army of them? Here enters a fascinating species, the banded mongoose, scientifically known as mungos mungo. These small predators live in colonies that can reach an impressive 75 individuals, though they normally stay in groups of 20 to 30. And guess where they live? Open forests and grasslands near water, exactly the type of environment we find in the Everglades. The coincidence is amazing. There's an absolutely incredible video record of these mongooses attacking an African python during the night. What you see is surreal. Dozens of small predators surrounding a giant serpent, 
forcing it to climb a tree to escape. Although it seems they were defending young rather than hunting for food, the efficiency of the group strategy is undeniable. Imagine this multiplied by hundreds or thousands of groups spread throughout the Everglades. Even the largest pythons would have trouble against coordination like that, don't you think? But hold on! Before we start releasing mongooses everywhere, we need to learn from history. And what a tragic story we have to tell. Let's go to 19th century Hawaii. Back then, the most precious commodity on the islands wasn't pristine beaches or postcard landscapes. It was sugarcane, white gold, that drove the local economy. But there was a huge problem, rats. These rodents were literally chewing away farmers' profits, devouring the sweet sugarcane stalks and causing monumental losses. In 1872, someone had a brilliant idea. Hey, the guys in the Caribbean are using mongooses to control rats. Let's do the same. And so, 72 Indian mongooses were imported from Jamaica and released into the plantations. The plan seemed perfect on paper. Mongooses kill rodents, rodents are destroying plantations. Problem solved, right? Wrong! They discovered too late a crucial detail. Rats are nocturnal. Mongooses are diurnal. It was like trying to mix day and night. They simply never met. While the rats continued their nightly feast in the plantations, the mongooses, hungry and without their main prey, began a massacre among Hawaii's native fauna. Native birds, turtle eggs, small mammals, everything became food for these displaced killing machines. The situation became so desperate that they had to build special fences just to keep mongooses away from sanctuaries and nature reserves. Even today, more than 150 years later, mongooses continue to be one of Hawaii's worst invasive pests. The only island that escaped this tragedy was Kauai, where mongooses were never introduced. And guess what? It's the island with the most preserved native fauna in the archipelago. Coincidence? I don't think so. So back to our original question. Would it be possible to use mongooses in Florida in a controlled way? Some ideas were raised, like releasing only sterilized animals trained specifically to hunt pythons. The theory is that groups of banded mongooses, with their natural social behavior, could be conditioned to attack specifically the invasive serpents. But even this more careful approach has serious problems. First, there's the obvious risk that, even when trained, mongooses would discover it's much easier to hunt smaller, less dangerous animals than face giant pythons. Second, we have the schedule problem again. Burmese pythons are mainly nocturnal, just like those rats in Hawaii. Mongooses, being diurnal, would probably end up focusing on local fauna that's active during the day. And third, Florida already has enough problems with invasive species. Introducing another one, even with the best intentions, would be like playing with fire in a gunpowder warehouse. History teaches us that nature is too complex for simple solutions. What seems perfect in theory can become an ecological disaster in practice. And now comes the big revelation. This entire discussion about mongooses in Florida was purely theoretical. That's right, the introduction of mongooses to control Burmese pythons never actually happened. This was an imagination exercise based on real facts about these incredible animals. But one that shows us how apparently obvious solutions can have unexpected and devastating consequences. The fight against Florida's invasive pythons continues, but with safer and tested methods. And who knows? Maybe the real solution lies in technologies we haven't even imagined yet. If you enjoyed this journey through the ecology and biology of these fascinating predators, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. And since we're talking about incredible predators, you can't miss the video appearing on screen now about the world's greatest snake hunters. You're going to be amazed. See you on the next adventure, folks.